how the thigh is well made to fit, then we can move up to the thorax and shoulder girdle, move to the trunk alignment. Things that can cause problems in the trunk, the pelvic instability, again, as I've mentioned, that can affect everything to do with the posture, so always take it back to that pelvic instability. Could be muscle weakness, could be poor trunk control if it's imbalanced, maybe something that adds that proprioception and that postural awareness to know where they are in space. Abnormal muscle tone, maybe pulling them to one side or the other. Spinal changes or even fatigue. Hypoxis, um, typically that rounded area of the, the back, the upper back. Um, we all tend to have this curve, it's natural that we have this curve in our spine, uh, but anything excessive in the potato of 45 degrees is considered excessive. Um, but quite typically, you might see that that's able to do. So you've got that tape fitted in and then you've got that hypoxis as well, pulling into that position. You might be associated with that. But if they're in that fixed position, I find it one of the most difficult challenges because how do you then achieve good head alignment if they're fixed in that position? There are things that can be done <coughs> with hypoxis, whether that's using tilted space um, to get a better view, um, eye line vision and head position, but then some people don't tolerate that tilted mm -hmm. space, it depends on, on the individual. Um, one of the key things with hypoxis is making sure um, that we address it the apex to make sure there's no increased pressure in that area. So something like the waterfall back. Yeah. Um, or on a chair like this, something like just a nice soft profile cushion to, to kind of fill in that area there as well. So we're looking for what we might find is actually we've got increased pressure in this area and then nothing supported above the blows. We need to try and essentially fill in those gaps mm. to make sure we've got equal distribution. and really get the comfort or even an articulated headrest. Yeah, I mean these, just bring that away. So if you imagine the shape of the spine fits in this position, you can um, start to get equal distribution of that area and then the spine weight distribution, but also trying to offer some um, support for the, for the head and neck as well. You might need an articulated headrest within the chair to that individual. You might need then to add some tilting space to that because okay we've brought the chair to the individual but that 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 force is still coming at the front so we still might need to tilt it slightly to bring the weight distribution back. Chair arms can help as well, especially with the hypotic postures. Um, if there is some room there to open up the shoulder girdle, sometimes the chair tarnas, um, it might just help and uh, it might just give them that feedback that's needed anteriorly as well um, to become more upright. Now we've got a soliotic, so typically found by the C curve or S curve on the spine. And some of the things that can help. So again, it's part of your assessment, that's where you'll see whether that scoliosis is correctable or whether it's fixed in that position. And as part of your assessment, you would have got hands on to the the chair to see which, what kind of point would help to either correct or accommodate that. And then you try and mimic it in the chair. So somebody with a fixed scoliosis might need there, maybe the contour of the back isn't going to be sufficient um, to get a trunk alignment. So you might need that external lateral support. Uh, which can be added to... We, yeah, all, all the seating range really, we can add. We, we try to start off, as you said, with the, uh, the option of least restraint, if you like, yeah. least restrictive option, but sometimes we just need to build more into the chair and we can do that.